If I need you, yeah. I know. Lord, there's not enough prayer could be made. Not enough intercession could be made. Lord, I need you this morning. Lord, just a little bit of resistance I've already felt this morning to change the message or preach one of the other ones I have in my file here, Lord. And I know, without a shadow of a doubt, Lord, that this is something that I see that is needful. Lord, help me. Lord, if there's one thing I'm aware of, there's a great evil in this world. Anybody sitting here would have to be a fool not to be able to see the evil that's in this world. And Lord, I'm going to be speaking about the one who's behind the heart of that evil this morning. <coughs> Father, I need you. I need you so bad. I pray you'll help me. I'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Can you see that happening already? Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, we're close, y'all. Except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called uh, God, or, sit, uh, and, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, Remember not that when I was with you, yet with you, I told you these things. Now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. That word let is hindered. We, we can get into that some other day, what the verse 7 means. There's so much people want to get into arguments about things that they don't understand and opinions and thoughts, but there's some things that are said here we understand, y'all. Watch this. We see the Antichrist here being spoken about. That's what you've read about so far. He's called the mystery. He's called the son of perdition. He's associated with the mystery of iniquity. He said, until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. I like this part, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. You say amen right there. Yeah, yeah. But before we get to that point, I want to show you the scripture speaks of some trouble. The Bible says we shall through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of heaven. Much tribulation. Say, so is a tribulation uh, in the future? Yeah, but there's a tribulation right now. There's tribulation to every saint. I'm going to show it to you. This Antichrist, verse 9, watch what it says about him. Even him whose coming is after the working of who? So who's, who's the power behind all of it? Who is the one that's influencing all of it and causing it to, to, to degrade and causing it to be wicked and vile and lewd. Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. How about you? Are you going to receive the love of the truth, or are you just going to continue on? Talk to an 87-year-old lady yesterday. Pray for her. Miss Daisy, I pray she'll show up here. Uh, you could start a verse, she would finish it. We talked to her for 45 minutes. You could start a verse, and she would finish it. How about you? Can I start a verse, and you'll finish it? Let me tell you how horrible the devil is. He'll let you quote verses and still go to hell. 87-year-old lady. 
Every passage, passage I quoted, she was reading it out loud without even opening a book. And I asked her, are you saved? She said, no. Are you born again? No. What are you waiting on? Well, I will in due time. Mm -mm. What a fool. And I ask you, because some of you say that's horrible. No, it's God's mercy. 87 years, and God's still showing mercy to a woman who can quote Bible, was raised right, taught right. Some of you can do the same. Still showing mercy. Still sent somebody to her yesterday to plead with her. And you know me. I pleaded the best I could. And every passage I turned to plead with her over, she knew the passage already. Boy, the devil, he's cruel, isn't he? He's cruel, isn't he? Can you imagine going to hell and knowing all the verses that would keep you out of there? I, I didn't even, I, I just, what else do you say? I ran out. We see the devil was behind this. And notice there's a lie in signs and wonders. Listen, brethren, the test of whether something is true or false, these Pentecostals got it wrong. I'm going to tell you they got it wrong. Well, here's the sign. Here, the Lord did this. The Lord showed me that. No, he didn't show you anything outside the scriptures. That's right, he man. never will. He never will. The devil is deceitful. Well, look here. There's a miracle happened. The Bible tells you don't believe it. That's what your guide is. The devil has power, and we're going to see that this morning. If you think he won't do something to, to keep you blinded that is miraculous, he sure will. That's how deceitful he is. I titled this message this morning, Why I Hate the Devil. I hate him. I see what he's doing in, in the lives. We're, we're, we're in a stage of Christianity where there's been such a decline from what's right that there's only a small remnant that is left. Uh, uh, Toby sent me something last night. We were live streaming. I, I got to watch a little bit of it, but the, the guy <laughs> even said, of those that are pre-tribulation rapture, there's not many left who even believe that, Christianity. It's the remnant is whittling, 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 smaller, smaller, smaller. And the little bit of the remnant that's left, God is sending them trouble. I mean, not God, Satan is sending them trouble. And you can see it. I want to show you this. Go to Daniel chapter number 7. Why is that? Why is that? I, listen, let me tell you. I, I can sense, and I, I don't have any special insight other than what I read in the scriptures. The devil himself is trying to hinder me. He don't want this message out. I, I'm, I'm struggling even for thoughts right now, y'all, if you want to know the truth. I'm struggling to even think about what I have written down. He does not, I could, uh, he does not want this message to go out. I know it. But by God's grace and by God's hedge, it's going to go out this morning. Daniel chapter number 7. Look at verse number 21. Speaking of the Antichrist, we've already seen who the power behind the Antichrist is, haven't we? Who's the power behind the Antichrist? 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. So here's the Antichrist spoken of here again, and I want you to keep in mind who's behind this. And I beheld, and uh, the same horn made war with the saints, speaking of the Antichrist, and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came, that's 2 Thessalonians. The Lord's going to destroy them with the brightness of His coming. Amen. There's just a, listen, there's a payday coming ahead for this crowd, for the devil and his crowd. But before we get there, I want, to, I want you to see what the Scripture says. Till the ancient of the day came and the judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, then came, uh, then the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. 
Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be uh, diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall rise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And again, we, we see the recapping of verse 21. We see the overview, verse 21. Now he's going back and reviewing and showing you and filling in the details that lead up to the Antichrist. Verse number 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall, watch two words, wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. Let me ask you. Is the times and laws changing? Can you see the times changing? People say the time. When I was a kid, this wasn't open. When I, yeah, the times are changing. The laws are changing. It will be not much longer before it will be illegal for me to speak against the wickedness that's in this land. I'm telling you, if you can't see this thing is going just as planned, you're a fool. You have the very script and the world is following it to a T. They shall be given into his hands until time and times be divided, so on and so forth. But notice, he's going to wear out the saints. The first reason I hate Satan. It's his main goal is to wear you out if you're a Christian. Listen, he, he'll wear you out through sickness. He'll wear you out through family strife. He'll wear you out through sins you might have committed, and you know you committed them. And he'll, he'll keep reminding you, look how bad you are. I'm going to tell you, I heard a preacher say this. He said this, every time Satan reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. Yeah. Let me tell you what. He wants to wear you out. He wants, so you, so you sin. Okay, get up, repent, and go do something for God. You're exactly where Satan wants you. If you're sitting down and said, I give up, I quit, there's no use trying. Amen. He's the biggest liar and deceiver you've ever met. Listen, right. let me tell you something. People have been worn out. Satan has used other church members to wear other people out. You hear me? People will hurt you. I'm telling you, if he can't get you one way, he'll get you another. And that's what he's doing in this generation. He is wearing saints out and that's why I hate him. When I look around and I see my brethren suffering and hurting, and I see the, 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 the scars that are there from a past life of somebody who has hurt them bad, or is hurting them still, I know that the devil, that's what he wants. He wants to wear you down. Go to Job chapter number 1. I want to show you somebody who was worn down. And it might surprise you to know that it wasn't Job. It wasn't Job. Let me ask you something. Why are some people not in this church that used to be in this church faithfully? The devil wore them out. He wore them out. And I'm telling you, saying of God, keep your focus on the future. Keep your focus looking ahead. This thing is, it is materializing just like the plan. Just like the plan. Look at Job chapter number 1, verse 7. Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Who did? Who's here again? And smote Job with bulls from the sole of his foot to the crown, his crown. Let me ask you something. What has Job suffered so far? And at whose hand has he suffered it so far? And some of you experienced the same thing. How about, how about cancers? How about bulls? He had bulls from head to toe. How about cancers? 
How about COVID? How about, how about things? Listen, I'm going to tell you, the Bible is very clear in John 10. We're just going to go there in just a minute about this evil being. He's evil. Listen, he has taken Job's children and his wealth, and now he is harming his own body. And I want you to see, Job isn't the one that got wore out. Look at the one that got wore out. And he, verse number 8, And he took a pot share to scrape himself with all, and sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. You know who got worn out in this family? You're going to find out Job is not worn out. But his wife is worn out. The devil has worn his wife out. Let me tell you something. I'm glad there's a man with the character of Job who doesn't lash out at his wife in such a way that it doesn't build her up. He reminds her of a truth because the devil's trying to wear her out. Verse number 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. What? Shall we, not receive, shall we receive good from the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Amen. Let me tell you something. You see who's behind it. And he will try to wear you down. I'm telling you, if you claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll wear you down. Preacher, why is there so much trouble since I got saved, since I trusted Christ as my Savior? I'll tell you why. Because there's an enemy who does not want you to open your mouth and glorify the God of heaven. Yeah. I'll tell you another reason why I hate the devil. Turn to John chapter number 10. John 10. Another reason why I hate the devil. He's cruel. The devil's very cruel. His actions are cruel. They're not uh, trying to build e uh, people up. They're tearing people down. Look what it says. John chapter number 10, verse number 6. And this parable spake Jesus unto them, and they understood not. Let me let you get there. John chapter number 10. John 10. John 10. Verse number 6. And this parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things, uh, what the, uh, not, the, uh, not what the things they were which he spake unto them. And Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. That's Job chapter number 1. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The devil's cruel. You can see it in his actions. He's very cruel. He's not uh, after your good. Acts chapter number 10. Let's see a woman here that uh, Acts chapter number 10. We see the influence of the devil here. Look at Acts chapter number 10. Verse number 34. It says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. I like a little emoji there, a little smiley emoji. Did you see that? Before emojis were ever invented, your Bible had it in there already. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. He's the Lord of all. That word I say, you know, 
which was published throughout all Judea and began in Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of who? All that were oppressed of who? Do you see that? Is Jesus doing the oppressing? I love it. I love it. I love it when people tell me this. I stand on the street corner one time, and I've heard it more than once. I love it. I had I, a lady pulled right in front of me and stopped. Said, Preacher, you're in bondage to your religion. And I said, Dear lady, you don't even know what bondage is. I am free now. I was in bondage when I was under the power of Satan in my sin. I was trapped and I didn't know how to get out. And when I found Jesus, I found peace for the first time in my life. If this is what it's like to be in bondage, I'm happily in bondage. I'm telling you, He set me free. I I lived a life that was so just discouraging, downhearted. You say, I never felt that. I'm just giving you my testimony. I thought I was free because I did what I wanted to do. Never realized till the end of sin. See, in the beginning, you don't realize it. You think it's fun in the beginning. In the end, you realize, I am trapped. And I cannot get out. I used to tell my Sunday school class, and just give you a glimpse of my... My, my range of mentality, okay, this is where I'm at as a pastor. I taught 6 to 12-year-olds. That's my limit. So now you know my secret's out. <laughs> That's my level of understanding. I thank God He uses it. But I used to tell my Sunday school class, maturity is being able to think beyond the point of pleasure. Oh, sin's fun when you're committing. It's fun. But maturity says, what's this going to cost me down the road? See, the devil don't want you thinking about that. He just wants you thinking about the fun and enjoying it now. Look at this. They're oppressed of the devil. We see this. Go to Revelation 17. Revelation 17. We see a whore sitting on that beast, no doubt, that's going to come out of the pit associated with the Antichrist here. Watch the religion. Uh, uh, of the last days, uh, we see this, or re- really the religion has corrupted um, Christianity in general. I, I believe uh, Revelation 17, a lot of people don't, but that's okay. But I believe Revelation 17 because of, uh, she's sitting on seven hills. I don't, I, some people say, well, this is a, a America. Well, uh, if you read verse number 24, chapter number 18, in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all that were slain on the earth. I don't think it's America. That's why I don't think it's America. People ask me why you think this Babylon's America. I don't. I think this Babylon is the religion that has corrupted the one you're still seeing in the news now, which is Mystery Babylon, which is the Catholic Church. I believe it's corrupted all of us. And you see the undermining of, uh, even, even now, the acceptance of what God clearly calls sin. He has taken one step closer just recently. The Pope came out said, well, it's not a crime, but crime and sin are different. No, no, no. (laughs) No, no. According to who? You or according to God? I'm telling you, you see the corruption. People ask me all the time, what about the Crusades? Isn't that Christian? No, that's this religion right here that did it. Look what it says here in verse... Number um, three, and he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon scarlet colored beasts full of the names of blasphemies, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and uh, and scarlet color and decked with gold and, and precious stones and pearls, having a cup in her hand full of the abominations of the filthiness of her fornication. It's a spiritual fornication, y'all, that leads to a physical fornication. Uh, listen, tell me a church that's, that's more full of idols. Tell me one. They got a statue of Mary. They got a statue of Peter. They got a statue of this person, that person. What good is that? That's all idols. It's all idolatry. Listen, tell me a church that is rich 
and the people that are part of the church are poor. Listen, I want to tell you something, brethren. The day that I live in a mansion and you live in a double wide, there's something wrong with that if I'm living only off of what you give me. Some preachers don't think like that. That's foolishness that a Catholic church would have a huge cathedral full of gold and silver and all of this fancy stuff, coffers full of great riches, and the people are so poor, some of them don't even have a bowl of rice to eat every day. Shame on you! Something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. You say, who's behind it all? Let me ask you, who's behind it all? We already saw that from the beginning. Watch this. Verse 5. And upon her head was the name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints, and the blood of martyrs of Jesus, and I saw her, and I wondered with great, with great admiration. Let me say you something. If you don't believe that's Roman Catholic Church, I got a book at home. You can, ha- you, 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 can, you can have it. I'll buy me a new one. Fox's Book of Martyrs. You read it from start to finish, and you tell me the one church that has done more than that church, the Roman Catholic Church, to slay the saints. I got one back there on my shelf. You can have it. It's about that thick full of testimonies called Martyr's Mirror, the Martyr's Mirror, and you can go back there and read it, testimony after testimony, and you tell me which church was, listen, people say, well, well the Muslims, they, no, they have not even touched the tip of the, the iceberg. That's right. I'm telling you, that church there has slain more than, than you can imagine. If you didn't agree with that church in the past, it killed you. Period. Period. But who's behind it? I don't hate the people. Don't don't misunderstand me. Please don't misunderstand me. I don't hate the people. I believe they need Jesus Christ like anybody else. And if you think any other way, you have some hatred in your heart toward there's something wrong with you. We should be trying to reach them. But we have to tell the truth so that we can reach them. Mm -hmm. We see here that the, the saints, look how the cruelty... Of, of the devil, how he uses a religion. People say, well, there's been a lot of horrible things done in the name of religion. Let me let you in on something. The devil likes religion. Yeah. That's where you're wrong. You think you don't like religion. The devil loves religion. He would love for you just to be religious the rest of your life. What he don't like is pit people putting their faith in Jesus Christ and what he's done Amen. for them. That's what he don't like. He's there. He's there. Yeah. But he'll give you religion. That'll keep you in bondage. That's how he's so cruel. Another reason I hate him, go to Luke chapter number 8. I hate him because he's against the gospel message. He is actually actively working, trying to distract people from even hearing what I'm saying this morning. How do you know? I'm going to give you Bible. Because I told you this, it ain't how I feel about it. It's what the Word of God says about it. That's right. And I know this, Luke chapter number 8, the very seed that I'm trying to sow right now into some heart so that they can be saved and they can believe and they can trust Christ as their Savior, there is an enemy trying to snatch that seed as quick as I'm sowing it right now. Luke chapter number 8, look at verse number 5. Luke 8, 5. You, you guys know the parable, I hope. Look at start at verse number 4. He says, And when much people were gathered together, and they were coming to him out of the, every city, he spake a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And he sow, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell upon a rock. As soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare root a hundred, uh, a hundredfold, and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. 
Listen, do you got ears to hear? Are you listening with your heart this morning? Or are you just listening and saying, I wish you'd hurry up and be quiet so I can get my check mark for today on the religious calendar that I'm keeping? I want you to see. Do you have ears? Are you listening with the spiritual ears? Are you listening with your heart? Because there's an enemy that is trying to steal the very message that I'm pleading with you over. Watch what he says. Verse number 9. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto others in parables, see, that seeing you might not see, hearing you might not understand. Now this is the parable. The seed is what? You know what I've done over and over? I have constantly pointed you to the Scriptures. I don't care if you like me at all. I care whether you like this book. You might not be drawn to my personality. You might not like my personality. And I'm well aware, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. But the words of this book are the words of the living God, and you need to like it. Look what it says in verse number 11. The parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear... Then cometh who? You know who's at work right now? Trying to snatch the very pleading. This preacher, I'm I'm trying to plead with you the best way I know how. I don't have it all figured out, but the best way I know how, I'm trying to get you to get your eyes open and see you have a great need. There's an enemy. Watch him. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then uh, cometh the devil and it taketh away the word out of their what? Hearts, lest they should believe in what? You know what the purpose of me sowing the word is for you? So to you to to believe and be saved. Do you know what the enemy is trying to do? And he's identified in the passage? He's the devil. You know what he's trying to do right now? I'm telling you, you're wrestling with it. Some of you are wrestling with it, and I know you are. On the inside, you're saying, well, why do you have to say it like that? Well, why, 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 I don't know. What about this and what about that? And Satan is just sitting there trying to snatch what I'm saying to you right out of your heart. He wants you distracted. He don't want you focusing on the greatest need you've got. And it ain't to like this preacher or come to this church. It's to serve the Savior who died for your sin. Throw in the towel and get your heart right with Him. That's what He's wanting from you. I don't, listen, the other things God will fix. He will fix all of that. What he is trying to get you to do is for the first time in your life, quit making excuses when you hear the word of God. Quit uh, getting your mind and heart so easily distracted because the devil's good at that. And get in this thing with all your heart and believe and be saved. Amen. And listen, it don't matter how hard. I, and, and I, I, people say, you like hard preaching? I like north preaching, I like south preaching, I like east preaching, I like west preaching, I like Indian preaching, I like Pakistani preaching, I like Australian preaching. I, listen, I, I like any soft, hard, teaching preaching, preaching preaching. I like all of it. If it comes from that book. That's it. See, listen, the flesh profited nothing. If you'd been in Sunday school this morning, Brother Alex must have said that three or four times, and it, it stuck in my heart. If you think this preacher can get up and his flesh will get the job done, you don't know this preacher too well. I'm pathetic. And you won't do it either. Your flesh won't get the job done. The devil is constantly trying to remove that seed that's being sown. And, and listen, look, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians 11. From the beginning, who was it? Who was it from the beginning that began to try to steal the Word of God and change the Word of God? If you go to Genesis 3 and the count's given here in 2 Corinthians 11, if you, if you, and a little bit of detail is laid out here, but if you go to Genesis chapter number 3, you'll see from the beginning the devil sought to remove the Word. From the beginning. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 11. 
I would that you would bear with me a little in my folly. Brethren, would you bear with me a little in my folly? You know why I'm so stirred up? I hate Him. I hate Him because it doesn't matter how much I try to get the Word out. He's working just as hard on the other side to remove it. I would to God that you would bear with me a little of my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent did what? What's beguile mean, y'all? Tricked her. Through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know what the devil is trying to do? He's trying to corrupt your mind. He's trying to remove the, the... Listen, some of you are so close, so close. You come up very close to the line of getting your heart right with God and getting in this thing with everything you've got and you come right up to the line and the devil convinces you to stay right where you're at. Yeah. Why? Why? How long will you lay? How long? How many years? 87 years? You're going to continue that for 87 years. Hearing the Word of God. Coming right up to the point of salvation. Said, no, the devil gave me an out. How long? How long before you're going to realize who's behind that? I'll say this. You think about the gospel message and how he attacks Go to, go to Matthew 4. Matthew 4. Do you know that he tried to attack the very center of the gospel? What's the center of the gospel, y'all? It's Jesus, isn't it? Now you would think the devil would leave Jesus alone. That's the Son of God. That's the Holy One of Israel. That's God manifest in the flesh. That's the ones that's over there casting my buddies out of them people over there. You'd think you'd leave them alone. You're wrong. You're wrong. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted, tempted of who? The devil himself is attacking the heart of the gospel message. Do you see that? He does not want the gospel message to be out. If the devil is attacking something, you're to take a good look at it. It's something that God stands for. Show you another reason. Go to Revelation chapter number 13. Another reason why I hate the devil. Revelation 13. Lord help me. Revelation 13, verse number 1. This is another reason why I hate the devil. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Revelation 13. I'll let you get there. Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horn were ten crowns. And, and upon his head was the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were uh, as the feet of a bear, and, and his mouth as the mouth of a, a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his uh, deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Uh, look at this. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power to the beast. Who gave power to the beast? Okay, who's the dragon, Revelation 20? That's Satan. And they worship the beast and say, Who is like in the beast who is able to make war with him? Now I want you to look at verse number 3. It says, All the world wondered after the beast. You know why I hate the devil? He is responsible for influencing a lot of people to go to hell. Your flesh is an enemy too. It's your fault. It, it, to, I'm not saying it's his fault if you go to hell. You had to make a choice to go to hell. That's right? That's right. right? That's right. But he is, he, he'll, he'll give you anything he can give you to hinder you. 
You don't need a whole lot of help if you want to know the truth. Your flesh, <laughs> it's just prone to wonder. Your flesh is prone to be contrary to God. He don't have to give you a whole lot. And let me say something to you. You read through the Bible. You know who you see the devil hindering? It's not the one who's complacent. It's not the one who professes Jesus Christ and is complacent. It's the one who professes Jesus Christ and has a heart that's intended to do something about it and rescue others. Which one would you expect him? If you're in a battle and he's a great captain, let's just say he's a great captain. We see he's fighting with Michael the archangel if you read over in the New Testament in Jude. Let's say you're fighting a battle and you have a strategy and you begin to look at all the pieces and listen, all this group over here, they ain't giving you no trouble. It's no big deal. But this group right over here, man, it is lighting you up. It is giving you a fit. It's converting your own soldiers to its side. Which one are you going to go after? Where are you going to put your resources? It's going to be in the one that's fighting. Christian, let me tell you something. That's why the Bible says fight the good fight of faith. Amen. That's why it says endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. That's why it tells you not to be entangled in the affairs of this world because it's a tough fight. Yeah. And the devil means business. You may not. You may, you may approach it like he's a little kitty cat. But I'm going to tell you, when the lion comes out, you're going to be surprised. I hate it because he's influencing a lot of people going to hell. Look at the same chapter. Here's another reason why I hate it. Verse number 5, where we left off. I hate him because of this. It was given to him a, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme His name and His tabernacle and, 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 and them that dwell in heaven. And He says this, and it was given unto Him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. You know what I hate about this fellow? If you read about the Antichrist, you know what he's telling everybody? I'm God. I hate it because he's blasphemous. He is mocking the true God of heaven and making light of the real God. Yeah. Now listen, there, you can tell God is very long-suffering. Just by the fact of how He allows the waiting game to take place with the devil. Okay. Okay. You have this amount of time, buddy. The Bible says He knows He has but a short time. God has drawn the line and said, that's all you got. You ain't got no more than that. I hate him because of his blasphemous ways. Makes light of, of the God of heaven. I hate it because he makes fake offerings or offers. You know what he'll offer you? Um, I, last week I, I mentioned, and I, it, it's crazy because you hear a lot of these superstars, a lot of these famous people, you know what they say? I sold my soul to the devil. I made a deal with the devil. Now, that's a big lie. That's what the devil wants them to believe, that it's a deal they can't back out of. But that's not true. Do you know the devil will make a deal with you? It may not be the level of them. You know you can have everything in this world if you just make a deal with him. You say, how do you know? Is that not what he offered Jesus? You know what he offered Jesus? Kingdoms of the world. I'll give it all to you right now. And yet the Bible says in Mark chapter number 8, down around verse number 34, 36, what shall it profit a man? Look at it. Let's go there. Mark 8. Mark 8. Let's go there. Let's go there. Mark 8. Mark chapter number 8. The devil will offer you everything in this world. He'll offer you everything you want. Look at this. Mark chapter number 8, verse 34. We'll start at verse 36. 
Actually, 34 is a good place. Sorry about that. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. So do you see you got a choice? You can either lose your life or you can save your life right now. You can have it all right now or you can have it all later. Verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know what the devil will offer you? The world. He'll offer you everything in this world. And listen, his, his pleasures are only temporary, y'all. Listen, Paul, if you were to make a million dollars tomorrow, she'd probably be happy. Hopefully mom and daddy would be happy. Let me ask you something. Because you'd already been in a couple close calls anyway. The Lord's been very merciful to you. Let's say the mercy ran out. And you were gone. What's that million dollars going to be to you? It don't mean nothing. Listen to me. You can make it, but you only will have it here. What is more important? Eternity in heaven with God's riches Or what appears to be a lot down here right now. Let me tell you what. He's, he's duped a lot of these. He's, he's, a dupe, he's duped a lot of these movie stars, these starlets and harlots and these ball teams. They just pay them millions and millions. Millions and millions. You say, oh, man, I like that. Maybe you would. Maybe you wouldn't. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you ain't going to like that part of owing all of it. And the devil is, he's good at giving you something that's fake. Listen, you don't need more money. I know people say, well, yeah, I do. You should see my bank account. We'll swap banking accounts. You might be surprised. <laughs> but the peace that God gives on the inside, there's no price you can put on it. That's right. That's right. There's no price. Listen, whether I got no money, or whether I got money. Paul said, I know how to abase, I know how to abound. Right. Whether I got good, or whether I got bad, it's going to be all right for me. It's going to be all right for me, because there's a God in heaven who paid my sin debt, and all of this stuff is just going to be over one day. Our life is like a vapor, appears for a little while, then vanishes away. The last thing I want to say, if you turn to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter number 6. You're going to see a passage here in Revelation 6. People are asking questions. Revelation 6. Look at verse number 9. Revelation 6 verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw the, under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost not thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? How long? You know what these saints are crying? How long, Lord, before you step in? Have you ever asked yourself saying that? Or found yourself saying that? How long, Lord? before you rise up against these enemies. And robes were given unto the, every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants, also their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Isn't that something? 
That's not the modern view of Christianity, is it? That's not the Joel Osteen view of Christianity. That's not the uh, Joyce Meyer view of Christianity. You get saved and everything just goes smooth. That's not Bible, y'all. Go to chapter 12. We go here, one more passage will be done. Chapter 12. Look at verse number 9. Chapter 12, verse 9. And the great jet dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And there was great rejoicing in heaven. People get upset when you rejoice in church, but there's great rejoicing in heaven. And ye that dwell in, uh, uh, in them, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time, Revelation 20, 19, Revelation 19, actually 20, we're going to close right here, let me tell you something, I hate him, I hate him, I hate everything about him, but one thing I'm happy about, God reveals in the scriptures, he's got a payday coming, listen to me, the devil's payday is also a reminder that you got a payday coming, if I can remind you of something, that book says that every knee shall bow to me, saith the Lord, and every tongue shall confess, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. That book still says that. Amen. Now, while we rejoice over the devil, I would encourage you to examine your life and where you really stand. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? Look at it. And I so saw an angel came down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, this is chapter 20, and a great chain in his hand, laid hold on the dragon, an old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and, and, um, and for the worship of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark in their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed is holy, and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death have no power, but they must be uh, priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations, which are uh, the four uh, quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them, you know what, Satan's out on probation right here. He's bound for a thousand years. Now he's out on probation. And he's going to violate his probation very quickly. Verse number 9, And they went up on the, uh, breath, uh, on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about uh, and the beloved city. Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now watch. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be what? Tormented day and night forever and ever. <coughs> when the preacher says, when the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future, that's his future. That's the end of this one that's been troubling us all this time. That's the end of the one that's been withstanding the saints for these many years. And I'm telling you, Christian, you need to look at that. 
You need to keep your heart focused on the future and, and how that judgment is going to come and a righteous judge is going to judge everything righteously when it's all said and done. And we need to focus on that. But I'm going to tell you, some of you may be here, and I want to give you a chance. I don't know how to do this right or how to do it wrong, but we're going to sing a hymn. If God dealt with your heart this morning, you can either sit there and let the devil steal that (laughs) seed one more day, or you can go ahead and do something about it this morning. And I encourage you. I encourage you to make your heart right with God today. We're going to sing. All we're going to sing is one hymn. I don't believe if somebody is her heart needs to get right, you ain't got to sit here and beg and plead with them. And if God dealt with you this morning, get it right today. All right? Let's take a hymn book. What's a good invitation here? How about pass me not, old gentle Savior? One of my favorites. Let's stand and we'll sing.